I promise I'm not turning this channel into a Tesla Cybertruck channel. But much like I've done in the past, I like to break technologies down to better understand how they work. And there was something about the Cybertruck that I just can't stop thinking about. Well, almost everybody can't stop thinking about it. That glass. What is Tesla Armor Glass and how is it made? And is it really that strong? I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. Sometime around 2016, Tesla spun up its Tesla Glass program to research and develop its own glass, which was headed up by former Apple's material engineer Mike Pilliard, as well as Kate Kuzina. It makes a lot of sense why Tesla would spin up its own glass research group, given how Tesla likes to use a lot of glass in their cars. Just look at the Model X windshield and roof. But they also wanted to develop something that would be more resistant to damage than your typical car window. And as we discover in 2017, that's something would make a lot of sense in vehicles that drive a lot of miles and can't afford downtime. At the Tesla semi-unveiling, Elon spent a good deal of time walking through the benefits of their new Tesla armor glass and why it makes so much sense for a semi. The reason this is important is because uh, truck windshields are huge and they crack about once a year. Um, and if the truck windshield is cracked, you're not allowed to drive. So it actually it's truck off-road if you have a cracked, cracked windshield and that, and that means lost revenue, disappointed customers, it's a terrible, it's a terrible day, and you, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, it can take ages to get a, to get a new windshield. So actually this, 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 detail, uh, this detail matters a lot uh, to, to someone who really is, is, understands trucking. Um, it's, it's, it's small but very important. So what is it? Tesla hasn't released any details on their exact formulation or process that they use to make the armor glass. But in the Cybertruck reveal, Elon mentioned that the glass was transparent metal. What, what about the glass? Love Seems like a vulnerability. <laughs> yeah, tra transparent metal glass. Transparent metal isn't a new thing. In fact, it's been around for quite some time now. And if you're a Star Trek nerd like I am, you'll know that transparent aluminum was a thing in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Stuck in the 20th century, Scotty needed to build an aquarium tank that would transport whales in their ship back to the future. So he gave the transparent aluminum formula to a plexiglass company to make it for them. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. It's a ridiculous plot, but as a kid, that sci-fi sounding glass really stuck with me. Transparent aluminum? I mean, come on. Well, little did I know that in 1986, when the Star Trek movie came out, there had already been a patent filed in 1980 for producing aluminum oxynitride, which is a transparent ceramic compound made up of aluminum, oxygen, and nitrogen. After combining those ingredients and compressing them into a shape, it's baked at very high pressure and temperature to make bricks or slabs. The result is mostly opaque, but after processing and polishing, the end result is transparent looking glass. The company Cermet, which is actually located here in Massachusetts, has marketed aluminum oxynitride as Alon. It's the hardest polycrystalline transparent ceramic available today and is used in military vehicles as bulletproof glass. Cermet put together a demonstration of 3.7 inches of thick bulletproof glass versus 1.6 inch thick Alon against a 50 caliber bullet. The results kind of speak for themselves. The bullet was able to penetrate the bulletproof laminated glass while Alon stopped the bullet completely. Alon's now being considered for use in the International Space Station for replacing the windows, and it's also useful in other areas of space exploration too. The space station windows are hit and chipped by debris in space all the time. And NASA requires laminated glass to avoid astronauts accidentally chipping the insides of the windows too. In zero gravity, tiny shards of glass floating around inside the space station could be very problematic. And Alon would be far more resistant to those issues. So why are we seeing this used everywhere? Well, it's far more expensive and difficult to manufacture than typical glass, which keeps the prices high. The latest pricing I could find cited it costing between $10 and $15 per square inch, which is most likely the reason we're not seeing it used in more places. But prices will drop as manufacturing increases, so it may have dropped lower than what I found. And Tesla may have their own formulation and process that makes mass production cheaper. Last year, Business Insider spoke to Rosie Mottsmith, who's a staff engineer at Tesla and worked on the Tesla Armor Glass. 
The team threw everything from rocks to shredded tires and tow hitches at sheets of Tesla glass to make sure it met the requirements. Truckers are basically mechanics and handymen. If anything goes wrong, they have to fix it themselves. A lot of times people think about engineers as optimizing things, but true engineering is understanding how your product is going to be used. It doesn't matter what happens in the lab if it doesn't keep the trucker safe. While we don't know for sure what Tesla's formulation is for Tesla armor glass, it wouldn't surprise me if it's aluminum oxynitride, which is a great candidate to achieve their goal for protecting truck drivers and to help keep those trucks on the road with minimal downtime. And it also makes sense why they'd want to use that same exact glass in the Cybertruck. I was actually a little disappointed in how they presented the features of the Cybertruck versus how they presented them in the Semi. In the Semi event, they did a great job walking us through the rationale behind all of the key features of the design. Not just the what, but the why. In the Cybertruck reveal, the focus was more on the what, and there was very little why. It also didn't help that the cracked windows undercut much of the messaging. But Elon's comment that it didn't go through is an important point. Regardless of what caused the glass to crack when it shouldn't have, it kept the ball from going through. And going back to Sermet's video of the 50 caliber bullet hitting the 1.6 inches of Elon, that cracked too. But the bullet didn't go through. For protecting occupants from objects hitting a car, transparent metal windows are a huge selling point, and one that I think we'll be seeing a lot more of in time. Just think about how durable your smartphone screen might be someday. There's a lot of potential with this type of technology. But what do you think? Do you want transparent metal in your car or your smartphone? And I'm curious if you like digging into this type of technology around Teslas and EVs in general too. I'm so fascinated by how some of this stuff works and how it came together. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with your friends because it really does help support the channel. And check out my links in the description for some Tesla inspired t-shirts and some great gear and discounts. And as always, an extra big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And welcome to two new Supporter Plus members, Jay Payne and Alan Johns. And there's even more folks who've been jumping in at the supporter level too. A big thank you to all of you. Your support is really helping to make these videos possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew yourself. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.